Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. A big old shout out and welcome to those of you that are new to the channel. Thank you so much for joining the family. You're, you're so welcome here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And for those of you that are returning, what is up, squad? So welcome to your readings for November 2019. A big shout out goes out to those Scorpios. Yeah, very happy birthday to the Scorpios. And also a very happy birthday to the November Sagittarians, yes? Can you guys believe that we are almost done with 2019? Like, this is a little bit crazy. We are getting into 2020 soon. That is super exciting. I hope you guys have had a really great year so far, but we're not quite there yet. So. These are your messages for the month of November. Please keep in mind that these readings are general. Yes, these messages are general. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information, including my email address and the readings that I offer, uh, their prices and a description of those readings are found in the description box below. Yes. For those of you that are new to my channel, what I will be doing in this monthly reading is what I call the freestyle or general freestyle reading. Yeah. If you would like to get a reading with me, I highly recommend that you start with that one as that is really quite a one size fits all type of reading. We could really get you some really awesome information, uh, very clarity into a look on what's going on, whatever question or situation you are interested in gaining greater clarity on. Yeah. Also, if you are new to the channel, please understand that number one, I am not a fortune teller. Okay. So what I'm doing here, what my goal is to give you guys is to get a look into the energy surrounding you right now and to give you guys a clearer understanding of what those energies are so that you can make a, a decision that is best for yourself moving forward in your life. Yes. Again, please keep in mind that these readings are general and I'm going to, for the most part, I'm going to be talking to the uh, sun sign or star sign. I should say star sign because it's not just your sun sign. This is sun, moon, rising and Venus, but I'm going to be talking to the sign that's in question, mostly looking at it from their point of view. So if you're a cross watcher, keep that in mind. But also if I'm speaking to this, and you're uh, speaking to this point from the point of view that you're the, the sign that you're looking at because it's the sign that is in your chart, but it's not resonating as you're the person that should be spoken to here. Maybe you're the person on the other side of the equation, then please take it as it resonates. Yes. Okay. Um, also keep in mind that just because these are monthly readings, like they're dated for the month of November, it doesn't mean it has to resonate for the month of November of 2019. All the readings on my, on my channel are meant to be timeless. Also keep in mind that this is general. All right. We're, so we're talking about anything that spirit wants to bring forward to you or wants to bring to your attention. This is not love career or, or, or sp specific like that in any sort of way. Although career may come up or career may resonate for you or love may come up and that may resonate for you too. Okay. But this is just an over open-ended overall look at the energies in your life. Yeah. I would absolutely love it if you guys would connect with me on social media. I am on Instagram at divine underscore conversations. And I do like to go live just about every once in a week to do a, uh, a collective check-in energy check-in for the Insta fam. So if you're not following me there, please, I highly recommend that you do so. Let's connect on social media. I'm also on Facebook, um, uh, facebook.com slash divine conversations. Now here's the thing about it. First of all, all, both of those links are in the description box below, but um, if you would like to get a reading with me, I highly recommend that you just email me or at the very least you can message me on Instagram. But even if you do that, I'll just be directing you to email. Uh, Facebook is not the best option to connect with me, to send a message to me or something like that, or even to try and book a reading mainly because it's not always reliable in notification, uh, as to when I get messages on Facebook. Um, and I don't always remember to check it all that frequently. So you run the risk of either completely me, completely missing your message or getting back to you at a really later, t really late time. So if you would like to, please, if you can go ahead and give me a like on Facebook and all that and connect with me there. But if you would like to get a reading from me, or if you would like to contact me in some way, email or at the very least, very least Instagram is your best way of doing that. Yes. Um, so for the readings for this month, I'm keeping with my normal and I'm using the golden universal tarot for our tarot spread and then keeping with the fall atmosphere, the fall feel, 
I'm going to be pulling Oracle Guidance from the Fairy Forest deck. I love this deck and it's so awesome. And it's been really, really spot on for this month. It was really spot on for last month as well. I'm really super excited for you guys to see these readings because I feel like overall they're really, really great messages, okay? So with that said, let's get to it. Sagimatazical. Hi, Sag. <laughs> Welcome to your reading for November 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, Sag, so let's just get in straight into your energies here. The first card that came out was the Ace of Swords. All right, so this is truth, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. I get the feeling that you know something. You might be learning something in the process of learning something, but okay, that's that's for some of you, that's fine. But what I really feel like is here, you know something, Sag, and you're just kind of like resting on it, sitting on it, probably not acting on it. You probably can't act on it right now because 10 of wands is the overall energy here. So there, I'm feeling like there are so many, there, there are too many burdens right now, too many responsibilities, too many obstacles, too many things in the way keeping you from acting on whatever a clarity, whatever clarity you have, whatever knowledge you're seeking. Well, yeah, okay. For some of you, you are learning some things. All right. I just feel like you know something, but now is not the time to act on it. With the Four of Swords energy here, you might be in the process of planning how to move forward with something which also is learning, leading to learning about something here. So you may have an idea that you're trying to flesh out. You may be going in a new direction, a new trajectory. It's just now is not, I guess now is not the right time to strike. Four of, Four of Swords is a, is a meditative energy, a contemplative energy. Okay. That's fairly cryptic, Sag, but I'm going to leave it there. Ooh, Seven of Swords. But I don't think, I don't think that, well, for some of you, okay, maybe, maybe you're aware of some sort of deception. All right, you know what? I'm not... I don't want to start getting a bunch of, I just did this with Scorpio and I, I, there was a bunch of cards that kept coming out during the pre-shuffle and I was just trying to clear the energies to get to the rest of the reading. So that's what we're going to do. But with the seven of swords that just came out, some of you actually may be aware of some sort of deception that's going on in your life. And you're not really able to do anything about it right now. You may be wrapped up with someone in which you have a lot of responsibilities with them. Um, they may be a business partner. They may be a creative partner. They may be a, a family member or a spouse or like a romantic interest, boyfriend, girlfriend. If that's the case, it feels like it's something that has been established for a while. Um, you know, you would have had to have been established for a while or at least had some sort of history with each other for you to accumulate all those 10 wands that are representing the burdens, the obstacles that are in the way, but someone is aware of something. Now on the other side, that seven of swords doesn't have to be deceptive in terms of someone is lying to you, someone's cheating on you, whatnot, whatever, no. It could just be you being stealthy, right? Ace of swords, four of swords, you know something or there's some sort of wisdom or knowledge that has been attained, some sort of insight, truth, clarity, whatnot, whatever, something may have been revealed to you or you may have come to understand something. But with the four of swords, you're not acting on it. You might be resting on it. You might be meditating on it. You might be sitting on it, just, just waiting for the right time to strike. So then that seven of swords could be you just saving face, playing along, something like that. All right, let's see what else we get for you here for the month of November. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Sagittarians, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of November 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. 
All right, you guys. I'm gonna give this five shuffles and we'll see what we've got for you. My sagamatazical one. Two. Three. Four. And five for Massages, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of November 2019. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's right, you guys. 2019. <laughs> Let's cut the deck. Boop. All right, Sag. Overall energy. Ooh, the chariot, but it sure looks like somebody's moving. Somebody's moving. And you know what? This may not necessarily be physical action right now, but this definitely is getting into emotional alignment with it. Whatever this is for you. That's the, that's the most prominent thing I'm feeling right now, Sagittarius. The fact that you are aware of something is enough of an impetus for you to start getting your emotions in check, getting into alignment with it, starting to get some sort of motivation or um, 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 momentum going here. The chariot also represents um, Cancerian energy, so you might be dealing with a Cancerian. Underneath the chariot you have, ooh, the king of pentacles. Okay. Under that you've got Oh, 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 okay. The Hierophant. You've got two Taurus energies here, so you might be dealing with a Tauren also. Underneath that, you've got the Ace of Wands. Ah, there's the inspiration right there. The inspiration right there. Um, this is very interesting. I'm, I'm feeling a sense of commitment here, Saj. Maybe you want to commit to someone or someone may want to commit to you. Oh, okay. Also, the chariot can represent travel, like physical travel. So like you may be going overseas or maybe that could be something, a part of the obstacle. There, maybe there could be a distance between you and this person. But what I'm feeling here is there is a desire to be committed to something in some way, to another person, to a career, to a job, to something like that, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Whatever that is for you. There, I just feel a sense of desiring to show up in a certain way for a certain someone or for a certain outcome, for a certain reason, whatnot, whatever. Take it as it resonates. This is a general reading. Although, however, the strongest thing that I'm feeling here is a desire to show up in a certain way to, to be, I just, I want to say to be a counterpart to somebody, to commit to something. I'm feeling a sense of wanting to be a provider. Okay. Um, there is a bit of traditionalism that I'm getting here. It's not, it, it could, uh, I don't want to say it's conformity. I don't really feel like it's conformity. And that's what we were talking about for Scorpio. So it's really interesting because I just did, I did Scorpio right before I did, I'm doing your reading here. Okay. So, um, it, and the Hierophant was representing conformity for Scorpio, but it's not, that's not what it's representing for you, Sagittarius. There is, it's just, there is a certain sense of traditionalism. I'm getting, I'm feeling an energy of a masculine individual or a masculine energy here wanting to show up in a traditional masculine way, which is not a bad thing at all. Okay. Again, this is not conformity. This is just a certain sense, a, a, a sense of traditionalism here. Okay. Now, if this isn't love or relationship related, this is definitely has to do with career for sure, especially with this King of Pentacles energy. And it looks like, ah, yes. Okay, so here you go. You could really be learning something. This is where the, the learning energy was coming from because the Hierophant does represent teaching and learning. And with the Ace of Swords, I was getting that you're maybe you're trying to learn something right now. Um, but then I was kind of like in the back of my head, I was like, mm, yeah, okay. But that's more of like, 
that's more of like a, a, a page of pentacles energy potentially because the page of pentacles is more about like apprenticeship and learning about something, learning something new, learning a new craft, something like that. But here the hierophant is saying is, is the energy of teaching and learning officially. The hierophant represents university, um, uh, uh, government, uh, whatnot, whatever. And it can represent school of some, t of some sort. And that could be where the traditionalism is coming into play because you might be learning some sort of practice, some sort of craft, something something like that, um, that you want to turn into a career. King of Pentacles. That doesn't mean that you're going to you know you're you're gonna you're gonna do it the way everyone else does it, but that's still yet to be seen. Ace of Wands is the inspiration to move in this new direction. And the chariot is the movement in that direction, the momentum in that direction. However, I do feel like the chariot represents right here, right now, the, 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 um, the cultivating of that momentum. Okay, getting your, all your ducks in a row, getting your emotions in alignment, getting in alignment with what this, this new career trajectory could be. Now, also keep in mind, guys, that this could be both romantic and uh, career oriented. So if someone wants to show up in a traditional masculine way, then somebody is trying to get their career together so that they can be a provider to, some, to someone else. Make sense? Take it as it resonates. It could be either be both sides of the equation for you or it could just be one side of the equation. 11, 11. All right, so let's go. Let's look at the rest of the situation here. First half, second half of your reading. Yes? Getting into the first half of your reading, first set of surrounding energies for you, Sagittarius, we have. Oh, the Three of Swords. What? This is a past energy. And I kind of feel like the Three of Swords is what's driving you here. Oh, Sag, this makes perfect sense. You remember two months ago back, was it two months? Three months ago. Three months ago, August, the August reading. You remember the August reading? You know where I started crying? <laughs> was it August? I think it was August. Might have been July. Maybe it was July. Either July or August. I can't remember. But but if you go back in the history and you look, I have a playlist. Go into the um, Sagittarius readings, Sagittarius monthly readings, um, and look for the most, uh, the one within the last two to three months, it's titled, Damn It, Sag, You Made Me Cry. Many of you have watched that, okay, and resonated with that. So that's what I'm picking up on here, all right? Three of Swords. The Three of Swords is the hurt and the pain from the past. But this is, in fact, what's driving you. It's more about, for some of you, this is an energy of wanting to prove yourself in some way. Okay, that's fine. Um, just be careful with that because, in all honesty, you really have nothing to prove to anybody other than yourself. So maybe you're trying to prove something to yourself. Okay, keep in mind though, that can still be pretty detrimental. But hey, to each his own, you go through your own process, learn what it is you need to learn for you, all right? Please do not allow me to tell you what to do. However, I do feel like it, it, if, if it's not an energy of trying to prove something, it's, it's a motivating factor because there has definitely been a lot of work that has been done over the last few months to pull yourself out of this Three of Swords energy, okay? Okay, it is in fact, I'm, I'm hearing it's a driving factor. However that resonates for you, take it as it resonates and then be very consciously aware of what that means for you so that you're not you know, digging yourself a brand new hole to, to, to get yourself out of. But um, yeah, okay, Three of Swords is coupled with, oh, the Two of Swords though. Oh, okay, so interesting, because what I'm hearing with the Three of Swords is it's also a deciding factor. So, wow, with this Two of Swords energy here, it feels like what I'm what I'm getting from this Sag is you're blindfolding yourself to any some to some sort of external influences and you're just allowing the feelings of whatever the Three of Swords was is for you, um, and I say was because it still does feel like a, a past energy. Okay, but I kind of th this is this is purely in, in intuitive, you guys, because this kind of goes exact against 
what the traditional meaning of the Two of Swords is. The traditional meaning of the Two of Swords is indecisiveness, inability to make a decision. You're either refusing to make a decision or you, you can't see clearly enough to make a decision. Now, there is another definition of this card that isn't as popular, and that could be using your intuition to make a decision because you see this woman is blindfolded here and the moon is above her. The moon represents intuition, maybe not being able to see clearly and the moon is not full, right? Okay, so that could be indicative of not being able to see clearly, but it could also be indicative of using your internal feeling apparatus or your, your, your intuition to make a decision. And so that's where I'm kind of feeling like you're blindfolding yourself to the physical representation of things and you're going by the feeling aspect of it. And I feel like this is, this is motivating you to move in a direction that is away from this Three of Swords energy, from this pain, this heartbreak, whatnot, whatever. That is, <clears throat> And so when I'm hearing, I'm hearing deciding factor for you. So it's, it's more about what it's, 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 it's less about, excuse me, it's less about what the external circumstances say or mean or what they represent or what they're showing up as for you. It's more about the internal. It's more about moving away or removing yourself, separating yourself from anything that would make you feel this three of swords energy again. Again, spirit just said it, deciding factor. That is excellent. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Sag, in the first half of your reading. Justice. I know that shit is right, Sag. I know that's right. Because by you making this pain, this heartbreak, the deciding factor in how you move forward in your life, ultimately you are bringing justice into your life because you are cutting out things that cause you to be hurt. Now, Keep in mind, you guys, as you move forward in your life, this doesn't mean that you're never going to get hurt again. It's just going to be in different ways. You're not going to be repeating the same lesson over and over again. Don't be afraid of getting hurt, guys. Please do not be afraid of getting hurt. It's all part of your expansion process, okay? So please, don't, get, don't be afraid. It's not a bad thing, all right? Justice is coupled with Okay, the King of Swords. Damn, Sag, look at you making all these wise and balanced and diplomatic decisions. <laughs> I love it. But check it out, y'all. Check it out. Some of you actually might be dealing with a, a legal situation here because to me, as a reader, the King of Swords is the judge. And the King of Swords is a very diplomatic energy. He's the person or the individual, okay? We're not talking gender here. We're talking energy. And it's a king, so I'll use the pronoun as he. But we're not talking, we're not talking gender here, all right? But the King of Swords is, a, is an individual or an energy or an entity that uses his faculties wisely, uses his faculties for the greater good of all. The King of Swords is representative of Aquarius energy, okay? So you could be dealing with an Aquarius. You could also be dealing with a, a Libra because justice represents Libra. Um, but the King of Swords is an energy that, you, that, that, that looks at all of the evidence, looks at every piece of evidence that he can find, looks at it at all in all different ways that he can to really get the best understanding of it of whatever it represents in terms of the case in front of him to make the most balanced decision, the most diplomatic decision, the most fair decision possible. And he does this even though he may already have a very strong idea of where he wants to go with this, what decision he might be making, okay? Very fair, very balanced, very just. I want to say, Sag, that you at this, whatever this Three of Swords energy was for you, again, go check that reading from a few months ago titled, Damn It, Sag, You've Made Me Cry. But whatever this Three of Swords energy is for you, man, have you matured through that. I mean, it, you have really, you have really stepped your game up here. Good on you, Sag. That is excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Closing mess. No, I'm sorry. The challenge in the first half of your reading here. The High Priestess. Good golly. This happened with Scorpio too. And I know you guys are not going to, you're, you're seeing this much later than I'm recording it. I'm actually recording this on the 22nd of October, just because my schedule is getting, it's going to be weird for the next two weeks. So I want to make sure that I've got these done for you guys. Okay. But Scorpio had the High Priestess and the Hierophant. Okay. 
you have the high priestess and the hierophant. Morning Coffee today had the high priestess and the hierophant. If you guys are new to my channel, Morning Coffee is the daily reading that I do every uh, Monday through Friday. If you haven't seen that yet, you might want to go and watch that reading. It's called, <laughs> it's titled Counterparts All Over the Freaking Place, and it's for October 22nd. Now, this is also a testament to how all of these readings that I'm doing here are timeless, okay? So I kind of feel like that's probably going to resonate with you. But anyway, I digress. Getting back to your reading. Your challenge is the high priestess, right? So whereas you might be under the influence of the hierophant right now, the challenge is to have an expanded view. Okay, the Hierophant represents teaching and learning, yes, but it also represents three-dimensional physical knowledge. The High Priestess represents spiritual universal knowledge, which is vast, which is infinite, all right? The High Priestess also represents secrecy. She, she holds all the secrets in the universe in her hands, in her head, however you want to describe it. And she is not going to reveal anything to you until you are ready. So for, I, what I'm really feeling, the strongest, the strongest element to this challenge for you right now is working on integrating and understanding deeper truths about the universe. And that could be directly related to this Three of Swords energy. That could be a direct, directly related to this Three of Swords energy in terms of asking the question of why the hell did this happen to me? It's entirely possible. The High Priestess is coupled with the Knight of Wands. It's leading you to be, it's, it's, it's creating an activation for you. It's leading you to be in some sort of light working ability or just shining your light in truer form than you have in the past. The, light, the Knight of Wands to me is an activated individual, someone that is um, kind of taken on the light worker responsibility or title um, is a light shower, is a torch bearer, is a way shower, that kind of energy. Okay, so the Hierophant energies might really be in focus for you right now because you're actually under the influence of the High Priestess and she's trying to help you wrap all that up so that you can really get into this light working aspect, this activation aspect here. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Cool. Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Sag, you have the Two of Pentacles. Okay, this is not bad, actually. This is really good. Right now, you're in an energy of, especially since you're in this learning phase, you're just in, the, in an energy of, try, of just keeping the balance, making sure everything is balanced. Weighing your, I'm hearing weighing the pros and cons. Okay. Doing research on something. You could be doing some research on something. Okay. Two of Pentacles is coupled with, yep, the world, because cycles, something is coming to a close. Something is coming to an end. So right now, you just need to be in this energy of making sure everything is balanced for you so that you can continue to close out this cycle. I love it, Sag. I really love it. All right, moving forward. Second, uh, getting into the second half of your reading here. First set of surrounding energies for you. Oh, the King of Cups. Ooh, Scorpio energy. Uh, some of you might be on the, on the cusp of Scorpio. So maybe you want to check out that Scorpio reading. Especially since you're getting some of the similar cards here. But emotional responsibility, um, love. Moving forward with the heart, with what the heart wants. And I do really feel like this is very much a healed aspect of you. Sagittarius. Again, we are not talking gender. We're talking energy. Masculine energy is the action taker, the doer, right? And I'm feeling like you have come to, Sagittarius, you've come to an energy in which, or you're coming into an energy in which your heart is absolutely healing from the heartbreak of the past, right? And now you're really able to move forward with what your heart truly desires. And I'm definitely getting an energy of not being afraid to, 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 to lead with your heart, to honor your heart where you may have been in the past. Lots of healing has happened here for you or is in the process of happening, uh, Sag, and that's a good thing. Uh, King of Cups is coupled with, damn, the Emperor. Oh my God, 
yo, Sag, someone is really stepping into some serious masculine power. And this is balanced masculine power. This is healed masculine power. This is just, this is honor, uh, honorable. This is loving, compassionate, caring, even nurturing, you could say. And also, yeah, there really is a strong energy of commitment here between the, hi the Hierophant, the King of Pentacles, and now the Emperor. The Emperor is very much a committed energy. The Emperor is committed to himself, his family, his domain, whom, whatever that means for him. He is committed to it. Wow, Sag, it really feels like you're taking your life back for damn sure. And this is excellent. There is so much masculine energy on this table right now. <laughs> Woo, all right, hey. Go on with your bad self. Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, Sag, you have, there's that Ace of Swords again. Truth, clarity, honesty. Learning, I'm definitely hearing learning, learning about something, learning about possibilities, whatnot, whatever. But I also feel like you are holding a sword of truth right now. And that really could be an energy of knowing exactly what it is that you want. And that ain't bad at all. Ace of Swords is coupled with the Six of Wands. Ooh, it looks like you're gonna get it too. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. But you see, this victory is coming into in terms of knowing what it is you want because now, or, or wisdom, intellect, and understanding. Understanding of the past, understanding why you went through certain things in the past, or just understanding, if you don't understand quite why you went through it, it's at least understanding the value that it holds in your life. Now, at this point, now that you're pulling yourself out of that, you understand the value in it and you can take this knowledge with you moving forward and create success out of it, okay? It's very much an energy of um, mulch or fertilizer, you know, having dealt with some really shitty situations in the past that have only helped to fertilize the plant that you are to grow into, uh, symbolically speaking, of course, to grow into something big, bold, beautiful, ex like unique, just completely 100% your own thing. That is excellent. I'm definitely feeling that. Ace of Swords, Six of Wands, taking the wisdom and understanding and knowledge from the past that you've experienced, that you've cultivated, that you've gained, and using it to drive your success moving forward. Congratulations, Saj. This is beautiful. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Three of Cups. I just heard, don't party too hard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, distractions. Okay. Three of Cups is definitely distractions, people. And this could be a situation in which you're feeling great, you're wanting to party and celebrate, and there and these are those are those like opportunistic energy vampires that that are latching on to you because they're latching onto the party energy, and once the party's done, they're gone and you're left like completely drained and probably like miles off of your path than you had intended, <laughs> you know what I mean, and intended to be. Don't allow yourself to get too distracted. Stay focused, stay clear on what it is you want. This doesn't mean that you can't celebrate, but be careful. Be careful of narcissistic energies and energy vampires that are just trying to capitalize on your good feeling and are just gonna drain you of all of that good feeling and disappear before you know it, okay? Three of Cups is coupled with, oh geez, the Four of Cups, okay? <laughs> We'll get to this Nine of Pentacles, now that you've seen it. We'll get to that in a second. Um, yeah, Four of Cups. Boredom, missed opportunities. Unrequited love, I don't know. Three to the Four of Cups. Yeah, I just feel like this is just saying be careful because now I'm getting an energy with this Four of Cups and now that, now that the party's over, oops, now I'm, now I'm drained. And I like have nothing left. I have no more energy left. I'm bored, I'm tired, I'm ugh, bleh, I don't wanna do this. Yeah, be careful. Just be careful of distractions, okay? Now, 
Your closing message or potential outcome, we already know, includes the Nine of Pentacles, all right? And this is autonomy. This is independence. This is standing on your own. This is rewards for hard work done very, very well. This is you being in that energy of being ready for that last pentacle to complete your 10, to have the, the, the career, the status if you want, the family if you want, um, the, the kids if you want, the home if you want, like whatever that 10 of Pentacles would represent for you, this is you getting into that that space of, of being ready for it. And this is your closing message or potential outcome. So yes, <laughs> nine of pentacles is coupled with, all right, Sag, here you go. There you are, temperance. This is your energy. Closing message or potential outcome is Sagittarius being independent, strong on their own. Businessman, businesswoman, if you will. This is what you're moving towards, Sag. That is what this whole process is moving you towards. So yes, Sagittarius, this is your energy officially with, this, with the temperance card here. But ultimately, though, grander scale, the, the temperance is representing this alchemization process that you are currently undertaking, that is currently underway. Okay? Beautiful energy, Sag. I really love it. So let's get into your oracle guidance now for the month of November. For Massages, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of November 2019. Here we go. Sag, 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 Sagittarius. Good golly, I cracked myself up. All right, all right, all right. Oracle guidance for Massages for the month of November. Oracle guidance for the month of November. November. Whoop, there it is. Holy crap. Sag, you really might want to go watch the Scorpio reading. Some of you could be Scorpio Sagittarius Cusper if you work with Cuspers. I know um, Vedic astrology does not recognize Cusp individuals. Um, but Western does. So whatever resonates more with you, go for it. And even if you don't have Scorpio in your chart, you might still want to go watch that because Scorpio got this same card for their Oracle guidance. Okay, and this is the unseal the the I, I hope I'm saying this correctly, but the, the unseely queen, the unseely queen. No, I think it's unseely, but glamour, opulence, and hubris. Even to the point where you got some of the same cards that Scorpio got: the Hierophant, the High Priestess, the King of Cups. That actually is. For the most part pretty much it but it's still uh, oh, okay whatever whatever take it as it resonates if you want to go watch it go watch it if not don't listen to me <laughs> but let's read this card here okay wow that's crazy that that wow okay here we go uh the words can cut so deep and how and those in power can be cruel they have resources and display their status with pride. They seem to lack all compassion and to care only for how they appear and how much they can control others. Because of their glamour, their wealth, their pride, they seem to hold all the power in this situation. Therefore, at this time, your self-esteem may have been substantially damaged. There may be harsh words being spoken about or to you and slowly, over time, the toxic moments have woven together to, and cast a cloak of bitterness over your once hopeful heart. You feel wounded, resentful, and helpless. You may fear, you may fear that you can, I'm sorry, you may fear that if you confront this, you will be harmed, hurt, disempowered, blamed, or weakened. But you must honor your own point of view, value your side of the story, and take necessary steps to protect yourself. You can prevail as long as you approach the situation with the belief that you utterly deserve respect and self-love. The unseelie queen is invested in how things look. She can manipulate public opinion and make others feel very insecure and unstable. Take this card to mean that you have a great challenge ahead of you to restore your own self-love, to become less vulnerable by those who seek to hurt and distort, to unapologetically present your case. You are a good person. You are strong too. 
Do not let yourself be harmed any longer. You may need to consider leaving an abusive relationship, be open to counseling from a trusted professional, and work on rebuilding your own confidence to where it once was, shining and true. You can do this and return from the, the abyss where you dwell now. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you, Sag. I really feel like most of, for the most part, this is already underway for most of you. All right, so beautiful, 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 beautiful. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, for those of you that are November Sagis, this is a great reading for your birthday, just like it was a great reading for Scorpio. So hey, kudos to y'all, yeah? I love you guys so much. And um, again, if you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. But with that said, I hope you guys have a great month. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of December. Good golly. All right. Anyway, take care. Mwah. Bye.